All right, take a look. Maybe something to consider for your grocery list. Uh, cookie mix, brownies, bread, lasagna noodles. Guess what all these things have in common? They are all gluten-free. So in our healthy living news, we're cooking and looking at the trend of living without wheat. That's what it is to be gluten-free. Registered dietitian Ann Dunaway Tay joins me right now. So first, you know, gluten-free, to go gluten-free meant that you had some sort of medical condition, and that was kind of the prescribed health care. Absolutely. For that is the dietary or the, the treatment for gluten intolerance or for celiac disease is to live a gluten-free diet. So why does everybody else want to do it now, too? Well, there are a variety of reasons. They might have had a friend who has um, taken gluten on their diet because they maybe were gluten intolerant mm -hmm. or has celiac disease and they feel so much better. So, huh. hey, they want to feel better, too. Or maybe they have a family member who has had to go gluten-free, so they want to do it in support of them. And other people are doing it because mm -hmm. maybe they think they might lose weight doing it. And that may or may not be the case. Okay, so now we're seeing a lot of products as we have, well, on this end, yes. that'll say gluten-free. So when you buy that product that's gluten-free, what can you expect about how it tastes uh, and how it digests, all that good stuff? Well, you can expect that it's going to taste as much like the regular counterpart as possible. The manufacturers are really doing a great job to try to produce mm -hmm. foods that, so people don't feel like they're missing out. However, you do have to watch out for certain of these foods, especially the baked goods. Yep. They have usually more fat in them, more sugar, and more sodium. And that's because they need the right texture and mouthfeel that you get when you take out the flour and other gluten-containing ingredients. So what is the substitute if you're going to take out these wheat-based things, a flour, etc.? What is in its place? A variety of things. Sometimes it's just potato starch, rice flour. It might be tapioca starch. Other times maybe they're using other flours based from whole grains that are naturally gluten-free. So it's a variety of things. But what we do have to watch out for is a lot of times they're missing the same nutrients oh. that gluten-containing whole grains do have in them. Sometimes they're added back in, but not always. And so you really need to be careful that you're getting fiber and B vitamins in particular that you may or may not be in these foods. So you mentioned a lot of people say they actually feel better by going gluten-free. Are they also seeing other benefits to their body, meaning they're losing weight, you know, as a result, or they feel like they're more fit? It depends on what they were eating beforehand. If you were mm. eating a lot of highly processed foods beforehand and you take those out, mm. yes, you're going to feel better and you're eating more um, fruits and vegetables in its place and other whole grains that are gluten-free, then you might feel better and you might actually lose some weight. However, if you're using a lot of the cookies and highly processed gluten-free mm. foods, then you might actually gain weight um, for some of the reasons I mentioned earlier because they do have more calories and so fat in them. might there be some people who need to stay away from this whole gluten-free phenomenon? Uh, well, yes. There is, there's, if you don't have a problem tolerating gluten, if you mm. don't have any of the symptoms and your physician has not told you that you need to be on a gluten-free diet, it may or may not be something that you need to do. You can tolerate it just fine and digest gluten just fine. It's not necessarily the bad guy it's being made out to be unless, of course, you do have a problem with it. And if I want to do this, is it going to cost me more? Yes. Uh, gluten-free products tend to cost a significant Why? amount more. Well, I think you're taking something out. Uh, you're taking something out, but you're using <laughs> a lot of specialty ingredients to go back into it and so it is more expensive but as you know these products are becoming more mainstream and the gluten-free food segment is growing by leaps and bounds the prices might start to come down and certainly mm. there's more variety available for those who do need to be gluten-free which is so great do you see this as a trendy kind of thing or is it really here to stay i mean especially of course it is if you have a medical condition but for everybody Excellent. else who's kind of on the bandwagon right now, is this kind of a trendy thing? or you know, it, There's it certainly a trend power. to it. I think there are definitely a lot more people. It's in the media. There's a lot more marketing behind mm. it. So there's somewhat of a trend to it. However, we do know that there's a large percent of the population that is undiagnosed with celiac disease and gluten intolerance. Mm. So the best thing you can do is if you're having symptoms is go see your doctor first before you go on a gluten-free diet because you will not get an accurate diagnosis if you take gluten out of your diet before you go see the doctor. Are you gluten-free? I am not. I don't have a problem with it, and I eat it in the form of whole grains. So it was well a part of a healthy diet. Interesting. All right, thanks mm -hmm. so much. And done away welcome. Okay, this is in interesting, fascinating stuff. I never quite yes. understood the whole gluten-free thing, but now I do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it is very interesting. I get it now. Yeah.